One of my students was able to land multiple SOC analyst interviews and apparently the hiring managers were pretty impressed with their projects that they have done. And in this video, I wanted to share with you the same projects that my student had completed and put onto their portfolio, along with a couple of extra ones that I highly recommend you try and complete, especially if you want to become a SOC analyst. If this is your first time seeing my video, hello, my name is Steven and I've been in the cybersecurity industry for over eight years now within the security operations domain. And on this channel, you'll find a lot of cybersecurity tips, practical hands-on lab walkthroughs, and projects that I'll be mentioning in this video. Let's start off with the first project, which is building a home lab. The objective for this particular project is to allow you to learn the ins and outs on how you can spin up your own home lab. And in that video, we do use Kali Linux acting as our attacker machine, Splunk as our SIM, and VirtualBox as our hypervisor. Now, one of the many ways a hiring manager can tell if a candidate is truly passionate about their work is to see if they have a home lab. And as a pro tip for you, the answer should always be yes. Now, it doesn't matter how fancy or basic the home lab is, you just gotta do it. Build it, tear it down, and build it again. So at the end of the day, you can speak to it when the time comes. Number two, Active Directory Project. This right here is one of the projects that my student had completed and put onto their portfolio. The objective for this project is to teach you how to build and configure a Active Directory home lab environment. So you can start playing around and begin learning the purpose behind Active Directory. This project has you spin up both a Windows and Ubuntu server, along with Kali Linux and a Windows 10 machine. At the end of the project, you should have a fully functional Active Directory environment that is then sending logs into your SIM, which will be Splunk. Many organizations use Active Directory still, and it is a good idea to have some exposure and experience with it. The more you know about Active Directory and how authentication works using Kerberos, the better you'll be at interpreting Windows security event logs when it comes to account management and authentication. Before I move on to the next project, if you're not aware, I do have a course called the My D for SOC Analyst course, and this course is tailored for both aspiring and existing SOC analysts. And it has over 30 labs and five exclusive SOC projects, along with a final capstone that mimics a real compromise. You can find more information about the course along with student testimonials in the description down below. Number three, SOC Automation Project. This was another project that was done by my student where the hiring manager was quite impressed. The objective here is to show you how you can build your own automation without knowing how to code. We'll be utilizing Waza and Shuffle. In this project, I'll walk you through on how you can spin up and ingest logs into Waza, along with integrating it with Shuffle, which will be our SOAR platform. This project is a little bit complex compared to the other two that I mentioned, but it is truly rewarding if you complete it and if it's done correctly. Automation is used quite heavily in today's SOC environment to help free up some time for the analysts so they can focus on what they do best, which is analysis and investigations. Now, what this means is that many SOC roles are starting to look for candidates that have some level of automation experience, although it's not mandatory, but it's always nice to have. With this project, it'll show you how might a SOC utilize automation and how you might be able to help create some of these for them in the future. Number four, SOAR EDR project. This is a similar project to the SOC automation project that I mentioned earlier, but without Waza and Shuffle. Instead, we utilize Lima Charlie as our EDR and Tynes as our SOAR platform. The objective here is to provide you with a bit more experience when it comes to automations, where we will create a responsive automation that will quarantine an endpoint if malware was found on it. Now, although this project isn't as complex as a SOC automation project, it is still rewarding when you successfully complete it and see it all work out right in front of you. Number five, mini SOC project. The last project I wanted to mention is the most recent one that I created, and that is the 30 day My D for SOC Analyst Challenge, AKA the mini SOC project. If you had one project to do, this is the one I highly recommend you go after. The objective for this project is to walk you through from start to finish on how to spin up your own mini SOC environment using the Elk stack. We also spin up our own command and control server using Mythic and integrate our own ticketing system using OS Ticket. 
Seriously, this is a compact project that will provide you with a ton of practical experience. By the end of the mini sock project, you'll know how to create your own alerts and dashboards in Kibana, how to send alerts to a ticketing system, how to attack and generate telemetry, and many more. I am quite confident that if you really put in the time to understand how all of these components work together, you'll be someone that really stands out during interviews. Now that I have provided you with five projects, here is your action plan. If you're just starting out, I want you to take things slow and start with project one, which is the home lab. Once you have that figured out and are comfortable with how things work, I would then move on to project two, where you spin up your own Active Directory environment. Spend a lot of time learning how Active Directory works, as again, many organizations are still utilizing this in their environments. The more you know, the more you can talk about it. Next, I would recommend you take on project five, which is the mini sock project, where you'll utilize the Elk stack to spin up your own mini sock environment. This should strengthen your knowledge on how to set up and configure tools that a sock might use. Once completed with project five, you should then go with three, which is a SOC automation project, and then finish off with four, the SOAR EDR project. The last two projects will touch on automation, which is incredibly useful in the SOC. And in my opinion, these are more complex out of all of these projects that I mentioned, which is why I recommend that you complete these at the end. Now this is important. Every time you complete a project, make sure you document it and add them onto your portfolio. If you're not sure how to create one, I'll leave a link down below for you to check out. If you go forth with this plan, you'll gain a lot of practical experiences and your confidence will also increase when it comes to your technical skills. However, one thing to note is that I don't want you to simply follow the videos and call it a day. Instead, I want you to use these videos as a guide and really try to understand how things work. There is going to be times where you'll face an error or things just won't go your way, but that's okay. This is where you start troubleshooting and researching until you find the answer. Because I want you to get used to researching on your own, as that is one skill many aspiring analysts are lacking. Now, the last thing I do want to mention, again, is I do have a course tailored for SOC analysts, where you can find more information in the description. And that is it for the video, and I hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.